very good evening guys so welcome to network ethics today is a day one of our fine on firewall compo in this day one as per our curriculum we are going to head into the firewall introduction so this session who at this session is going to help for the person who doesn't aware about the firewall or very new to the firewall technologies or network security domain okay yes the mother it's a vendor specific trading okay so <clears throat> as i mentioned you can just ping me so the common queries we can talk uh, talk to each others okay we can talk to each other so i so that you can able to uh, get all your queries okay uh, answer for all your queries okay fine so yeah it's <clears throat> it's a day one for fine on firewall compo in this day one as per our curriculum we are just heading to the for introduction to the firewall and this session is very help, very much helpful to helpful for the person who doesn't have aware about firewall so maybe you're already working in a networking domain or some other domains and you those who want to head into the network security or cyber security domain firewall is the first step okay so it's a it's an uh, <coughs> entry level thing uh, you need to learn firewall is a must having knowledge for the cyber security engineers and network security engineers even nowadays for network engineers as well so they are asking for the firewall knowledge okay so <clears throat> so those who already know what is firewall you can just give your answer so what is firewall what is what what is firewall and why we need this firewall guys any idea what does firewall what purpose we have we need to have a firewall in your production network yes anybody Okay, it's a network security device to protect your network from unauthorized access gaining. Okay, fine. Who's that? So it's Damodaran. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well said, Damodaran. Anything else, guys? So unauthorized access gaining and attacks. Yeah, fine. Yes. So to uh, protect your network from the malicious activities. So malicious, unauthorized access gaining in intrusion, data stealing, right? Um, right. So <clears throat> data for a data production purpose to avoid the data <clears throat> leakage, right? So for that purpose, we need to have a firewall. Okay. So yeah. So can anyone tell me what are the fire type of firewall we have? So or you can list out whatever the what are all the firewalls you know. Okay, fourteen eight Palo Alto. Okay, fine. So these are all the firewall. What type of firewall is? So Palo Alto fourteen eight. So you may work or you may hear in your production network, they may have the 14-inch firewall, Palo Alto firewall, a checkpoint firewall, Cisco firewalls, right? So whatever it is. So these are all the network firewalls, okay? So whatever here you guys are listed, right? So almost all these firewalls are network firewalls, okay? So according to me so firewall it's a mechanism it might be a hardware based firewall it might be a software based firewall it might be application based application firewall or it might might be a uh, endpoint production endpoint firewall whatever it is right so it's in a mechanism which help us to protect your network from the unauthorized access gaining or and malicious network or 
not only to protect your network for the unauthorized access gaining and your it is going to protect or it is going to avoid your internal users to uh, access unnecessary applications or services over the internet and as well as internet users it can it can did uh, <clears throat> avoid outside users to coming into your inside network in your production network and to access your application and services unnecessarily or un, uh, un <clears throat> unaccountably they are trying to access if they are trying to access it and your fire this firewall will protect <clears throat> from these kind of activities guys okay and this firewall it's a uh, an entry level security point or entry level product which which is going to protect your network or it's it's a safeguard it's just like a uh, guard in your product and product in your production network it will be a first point to uh, address your um, product your, your production network uh, requests or uh, the application or service whatever your internal user is trying to access over the internet or our internet user is trying to access inside your production network so that app device is going to examine all the activities of your production network and it is going to prevent us from the malicious activities vulnerabilities spyware whatever it is the access unauthorized data data access data gain uh, <clears throat> data stealing all right so whatever it is so that firewall is the entry point between <clears throat> your production network to internet and internet to your production network it is going to the inspection point or entry point or you can say it's a border gate border point right right so like that you can just <clears throat> say yes okay so this firewall so i'm talking about the network level firewalls whatever i just discussed right so that is kind of network related firewalls network based firewalls okay so actually firewalls <coughs> we have a different kind of firewalls so firewall let me draw about firewalls so this firewalls just forget about the traditional next generation firewalls so commonly we can classify the firewall based on the appearance or based on uh, hard hardware based firewall software based firewall okay so hardware based firewalls means uh example for hardware based firewall palo alto checkpoint cisco as and cisco ftd fortigate all are having a hardware based firewall they are having a hardware okay so palo alto checkpoint fortigate right all are having a hardware based firewall and as well as they are having a software based firewall as well again i can give example for palo alto as a software based firewall and checkpoint as a software based firewall fortigate as a for software based firewall okay and additionally uh, this software based firewall we can classify further okay so we have some application based firewall as well so that and all comes under the software based firewall okay so if you are defining a the <coughs> physical uh, a physical wise or hardware based or operational based firewalls if you are trying to classify you some of the firewalls comes under the hardware based firewall and then application based firewall as well so i mean software based firewall as well so that would be uh, not a good i mean good approach to classify your firewalls so i am going to classify the firewalls based on the functionality okay so let me classify the firewalls network based firewall which we are going to learn all this firewall right for five known firewall in this compo right so all this firewalls are network based firewall okay so which we are going to learn here and then again software based firewall not software based firewall i'm going to classify as a endpoint protection endpoint firewalls or endpoint protection okay so network based firewall which can provide the security which can provide the ins inspection or uh, which can do deep inspection in for your entire network when you are having a network right so let's say this is my network so this is my firewall 
and I have one LAN subnet. Inside my LAN, I have a hundred PCs. Okay, so this is internet. This is, let's say, this is a Palo Alto firewall. Okay, so in this scenario, if I deployed Palo Alto, example for network-based firewall, Palo Alto firewall, all next generation firewall here, which we are going to learn, right? So all the fine known firewall or network-based firewalls, Palo Alto, FortiGate, Checkpoint, ASA and FTD, right? So all our next generation firewall, sorry, all our <clears throat> network-based firewalls. Just to make this. Sorry. Okay, fine. <clears throat> for example, for endpoint production, so you can say, can anyone tell me an example, just like how you said Palo Alto, FortiGate, these firewalls as an example, right? So the same way, can you tell me any endpoint production firewalls, whatever you know? So most of the scenario, we are using daily basis. Okay. So can anyone list out any known endpoint production, endpoint firewalls? Or software firewall, you can say some application based firewall also, you can say sometimes. Okay. So can anyone guys? Uh, in Fortinet, we have an endpoint protection, but Fortinet, if you say that Fortinet, it's a brand name. It's not a firewall or application name. Okay. So Fortinet <coughs> endpoint protection, right? So Forti client, we have an application called Forti client. That is an endpoint protection firewall. It, it will do some, it, it will do uh, act like a firewall as well for the I'll just like antivirus. So you can give any antivirus application as an uh, so endpoint protection firewall. Okay. So that is application based firewall or you can say it's a next generation. I mean, a endpoint protection firewalls as well. You can say so any type of antivirus application which you are installed in your endpoint machine, which your desktop or laptop, right? So <clears throat> that is called endpoint firewall or endpoint protection. Okay. So, and most of the scenario, those who are working with the Windows operating system, inbuilt firewall is Windows Defender. Windows Defender we have, right? So we are using daily basis. So that is for the example for endpoint firewall. And when by using a Windows Defender, you can allow some services, deny some services, right? So you can define the application access level by using a Windows Defender itself. And <clears throat> okay, and we do have a endpoint for applications or I mean endpoint antivirus programs, whatever, um, McAfee, right? So K7, like that we have a, and then uh, that endpoint protection, this, <clears throat> I mean, uh, end user level protection, corporate level protection, we have it, okay? So different kind of, for corporate level, uh, end user endpoint protection. So you can give an example your 40 net 40 client applications or 40 <coughs> Okay, 40 net a lot of a lot of when when does we have for the corporate based? You can give a, a McAfee as well uh, Right, so a lot of applications we have for endpoint protection. So now We know what is network. I mean we need to know what is network based firewall and what is endpoint firewall. Okay, so 40 analyzer, not 40 analyzer is a tool to just create, generate the report to analysis your live traffic flow in your 40 gate firewall. Okay. 40 analyzer, it's not an endpoint production tool or application. Okay. So it's a uh, kind of device or a uh, <clears throat> virtual machine. Um, you can deploy as a virtual machine as well. So which can which can compare and generate the reports visualize visualizely and in an enhanced way for the log analyzer 40 analyzer for log segregate it will it will collect all the logs in your production network and it will segregate the report it will it will segregate the logs and it will provide the uh, reports in an enhanced way 
Okay, so for that purpose only, we have a fair 40 analyzer. Clear, guys? So, yeah. So now we need to know what is network based firewall and what is endpoint firewall. So, by this simple diagram, I just want to explain the difference between the network firewall and endpoint production. So, let me, I mean, we know what is example for network firewall and endpoint production firewall, right? So, all our, let's assume that all our Windows different, the Windows operating system running behind the Windows operating system. So Windows OS. So Windows OS have inbuilt endpoint, endpoint, I mean endpoint firewalls or endpoint production application called Windows Defender. So that can be analysis, that can be scan your, your traffic and it can analyze the vulnerability and it can prevent that or it can remove that, right? But <clears throat> the same way, now we have a Palo Alto firewall as well. Then what is the difference between both of them? So endpoint protection will protect only an individual device. So as if if you're installed um, any antivirus program, let's say McAfee or K7, right? So uh, this antivirus application will do, let's say this user is trying to access the internet. So in, in, in internet, he tried to access some malicious, he tried to access some application or service, but that application and service having a malicious activities or malicious vulnerabilities are content, uh, I mean, contain on the traffic. So I just forget about the firewall, Palo Alto firewall here. I don't have any firewall, I mean, network based firewall. So I have a endpoint protection firewall. In this use case, what will happen? The, applic the vulnerability which he tried to install, or access right so that will be installed in his machine so if you have a endpoint protection and this machine will <clears throat> likewise so once this machine is uh, infected with the vulnerability whatever the machine is trying to communicate with the infected machine all these machines will be infected okay so now this machine is not having these two machines are not having an endpoint protection but only this machine only having an endpoint protection Okay, likewise, I have we have a hundred machines. So all this hundred machines will be uh, as soon as infected with your internal LAN machine. So all the machines are going to communicate in your, your entire LAN will be infected by the same vulnerability. But fortunately, in the first machine, we have an endpoint production application. So now what will happen? Endpoint production will do again, it will do deep inspection and it will it will do scan and it will identify the vulnerability spyware or malware whatever it is the uh, which is going to uh, which is affected your network right and after scan it will remove it it will help us to remove that virus malware so it will remove it but this protection it will give only on this machine only specific machine okay <clears throat> once the endpoint protection will try to provide the protection on that specific machine not entire network so in my remaining, in my network, in remaining machines, I don't have any endpoint production application. Now what will happen? It will entirely affect my production network guys. Okay. So to, uh, so my endpoint production is failure to protect my entire network resources, not only end user, end user machine one, that specific machines. I have a hundred LAN machines. Along with that, I have some uh, scanner, some printer and then some other uh, devices, wireless access points I have, and then wireless mobile also there. Uh, mobile also might be connected with my internal users, right? And I have uh, some storage devices. I have some uh, servers, analyzers, right? I mean, they're just like a remote um, log, log <coughs> segregation, log, uh, log servers, right? So a lot of things I have, right? So not only end user machine. I have entire my entire infrastructure. I have multiple different kind of application and services and products. I have it network based products which can communicate or which can share over the network, right? So all these devices not be secured by your endpoint protection guys. So if in this use case, instead of endpoint protection, if you have a network firewall, example Palo Alto firewall, and your Palo Alto firewall, right? So whatever the users, anybody, if they try to communicate with the internal, I mean, uh, internet and they try to download something on internet and that unfortunately that is infected by the virus or malware, whatever, whatever the intrusion, right? So intrusion or uh, maybe data ceiling attack, whatever the type of attacks, right? So if you have a network firewall, it will do in that network firewall 
it will do inspect the live traffic incoming and outgoing traffic so in case while doing a inspection in case if it is find uh, anything as a vulnerable spyware malware it can break here itself it where it can control here itself so that your entire network will be in a safer zone it's not just like a endpoint protection only providing a security on that specific machine which which uh, which is installed on the i mean that that particular installed machine right it's not like that it can provide entire network security for entire network so that's the reason they have classified as a network based firewall okay and that is more important all the production network why we are having an ex instead of next all or have most of the scenario we are we do install the endpoint protection as well but we are having a fine i mean network based firewall as well for a better security purpose okay and endpoint protection will not a uh, will not able to control the traffic what kind of traffic it can do the inspection and it can identify the vulnerability and it can removes vulnerability virus malware but it cannot control the traffic flow so if i have a next network based firewall i can control the traffic whichever the traffic or application service i want to allow to my internal users to access the internet or internet users to access my internal network that control i can able to do it on my network based firewall only not by endpoint protection firewall okay these are all the two major difference between the endpoint fire endpoint protection firewall and network based firewall okay clear guys i hope now you guys are aware what is network based firewall and what is endpoint protection firewall okay endpoint firewall clear so why we need a next generation firewall in your production network so next generation firewall only can protect your entire network resources and it can also control the traffic flow you can you you can have a granular control on your traffic what kind of application or services traffic you need to allow inside your production network from in from your production network what kind of traffic application service uses to access the internet specific traffic that you can able to do it by the help of network based firewall not endpoint protection clear guys <clears throat> any doubts in this guys up to now any queries regarding this up to now i hope it's clear right difference between the network based firewall and endpoint protection okay fine so now this network based firewall we can further classify okay so in <clears throat> two different classification we can do it in a network based firewalls so that are i already wrote, <clears throat> wrote here right so traditional firewall and next generation firewall guys okay so traditional firewall so traditional firewall which help us to control control the traffic control the traffic means as a firewall administrator you can define what kind of application what kind of server not not application in a traditional firewall what kind of source and destination you can you want to allow uh, that communication or what kind of source and destination and services you want to deny right so that control you can have it when you are having a traditional firewall if it is a firewall right so if it is a firewall it has to do two jobs one is <clears throat> control the traffic the firewalling firewalling is traffic control okay control the traffic flow okay traffic or traffic flow and additionally it has to do deep inspection the good firewall has to do these two activities it's need to monitor the live traffic allowed traffic whether the traffic is secure traffic or infected with some virus malware spyware or non secure traffic right so any intrusion or vulnerability is there in the traffic that inspection it has to do if it is a firewall it should control the traffic and it should it should do deep inspection okay but traditional firewall have the option only control the traffic it will not do deep inspection traditional firewalls will do control the traffic but it will not do deep inspect even it it can help us to 
define what kind of service and applications are you uh, <clears throat> they, we need we want to allow or deny right so that we can able to define by the help of traditional firewalls right not inspection is not possible exactly example for traditional firewall asf cisco asf firewall i'll let you know that one by one okay cisco asf firewall is a, one of the greatest example it's for traditional firewall and normal routers whatever the routers are in your wi-fi router wi-fi modem you have right so some that l3 routers normal l3 routers and wi-fi modems right so that and all it's an example for the traditional firewall you can control by using your wi-fi router you have some you in your wi-fi router itself you can you can define what kind of service application you want to allow you can just create a rule acl and likewise cisco router normal normal routers not only cisco routers you can create a acls to allow or deny the traffic right so asa and normal routers l3 routers right so <clears throat> we you can use as a firewall before the firewalls before the traditional i mean uh, modern firewall or the traditional firewalling concepts we used r routers only for filter the traffic by using acls right so <clears throat> This traditional firewalls, I mean the router or ASA, they don't have an option. They have options to filter the traffic by creating an access list, right? By executing the access list, they can able to allow or deny that we can able to decide based on the layer three filters, layer four filters, which means IP based, network based, protocol based, right? So we can able to filter the traffic. <clears throat> clear guys so now this traditional firewalls further okay tradition what is the drawback when you're having a traditional firewall traditional firewall can do firewalling filtering instead of saying firewalling i'm saying that filtering traditional firewall can do filter no inspection okay so by the way this traditional firewall i just want to classify further in two methods we can classify so that are stateful firewall stateless firewall or you can say packet filtering firewall or stateful firewall. packet filtering firewall or you can say it's a stateless firewall and an another <clears throat> classification is stateful firewall guys okay so packet filtering firewall example for packet filtering firewall your router you can give you can give a, your normal router as a packet filtering firewall so whatever the device if you are able to create a acl and filter the traffic and that is packet filtering normal cisco router or your wireless home router right so <clears throat> other routers other brand, other uh, vendor routers right so you can create a acls to allow or deny the traffic guys okay so then what is stateful traditional firewall so the difference between the packet filtering first we need to know difference between the stateless and stateful or packet filtering and stateful firewall okay so when you're creating a when you're deploying in your stateless firewall or packet filtering firewall in your production network that will work based on the acl okay and it doesn't maintain the connection table okay so let me so connection table it will not maintain so we we'll, what is connection table your stateful firewall will maintain a connection table the difference between the stateless and stateful the state information okay so the traffic state information the traffic is already authenticated or not authenticated right the traffic is still live or not right? that state information will not be maintained no state info okay that state information is not maintained by the packet filtering firewall but packet uh, stateful firewalls will maintain the state information okay 
<clears throat> or they can call it as a connection table. Or you can say it's a session table. So session information is not maintained by the packet filtering firewall, but stateful firewall and next generation, all next generation firewall, they are maintaining the next generation firewall also. It's it's a stateful firewalls and they are maintaining the state information. But traditional firewall, there are two types. One is not maintaining the state table. Another one is it's maintaining the state table. So packet filterings, uh, it will not maintain the state information, or session table info, right? But stateful firewall will maintain a session table information or you can say it's a state information, connection table, session table, session info, all are same guys, okay? So that information will be maintained by the stateful firewall, okay? So now, what is because of maintaining the state or because of not maintaining the state what is the drawback in your packet filtering firewall and because of maintaining the state information what is the advantage of having a stateful firewall that we are going to see so now we are going to see the uh, pros and cons of the packet filtering firewall which is not maintaining the session table or connection table so again you can control the traffic by creating a ACL in a packet filtering firewall as well. Traditional, in a traditional firewall, by creating ACL, you can just <clears throat> filter the traffic, right? And the pros and cons are, so when you have a packet filtering firewall, you can filter the traffic based on the layer three and layer four filter. So layer three means IP based, source IP, destination IP and network based source network and destination network these four filters you can use it and and when it comes to the l3 filters when when it comes to the layer 3 layer 4 filter transport layer okay transport layer filter you can use <clears throat> protocol and services port numbers protocol as a filter and port number as a filter protocol TCP protocol or UDP protocol, right? Port numbers, so whatever the services are, you can say it's a services, so web services, mail services, right? And <clears throat> whatever the services you want to allow or deny that you can use as a filter and comes to the layer four filter, okay? The disadvantage of having a packet filtering firewall, first reason, it will not maintain the connection table. It doesn't mention here. Okay. So the first and major reason no state info. So it will execute the ACL for E. It will do deep inspection. Advantage of having a packet filtering firewall more faster. You can execute the ACL faster and it will pro provide the throughput very faster but <clears throat> implementation is easy these are all the advantages so that we will see in another uh, slide or another uh, mind map okay so that is a comparison between the state i mean traditional firewall and next generation firewall so now why we are seeing what is traditional firewall what is next generation firewall it's not a full comparison it's a difference between we are we are, we are just seeing what is the feature we have in an next generation firewall? What is the uh, features we have in a traditional firewall? That only we are seeing right now. Okay. So in another slide, I'll show you the full comparison implementation wise. Right. So some of the same point will be there. An additional point also will be there in that slide. Okay. If we have time today, we'll discuss or tomorrow we'll discuss that. Okay. So fine. So when I use the packet filtering firewall, I can only filter the traffic based on the source IP and destination IP based on the services. Okay, let's go back to your, my topology. Here, let me draw a small topology here. This is my, oh, okay. let me. So guys, am I audible clearly? Can you hear me now? 
yeah sorry <clears throat> so now now let me draw some small topology this is my router which is packet filtering firewall you can use as you can define it you can main take like this it's a router okay it's not any other firewall it's a router and i have a my lan segment i have a system a i have a system b and it is connected with the isp and here fb fb server okay so now system a which is having this fb have ip address 20 dot So whatever it is, just assume it, guys. So my network have 10. This is 10.20. Okay. So my system A and this is my system B. And now they want to access some services over the internet. They want to access Facebook. Okay. I have a network a router here. So I just want to allow system A to access the FB and system B to access, uh, to deny the FB. Okay, Facebook server, I don't, I want to allow system A users only to access Facebook and system B user, I don't want to allow to access Facebook. Okay, so in this use can, uh, use case, I can create a rule ACL in my router. So source, as a source IP as a filter 10.10 .10, if services web services right i mean facebook if it is a facebook source and destination is 20.10 and protocol tcp it's user fb user web services and that is running under tcp protocol http yes services okay so protocol is http and services https which is using port number 443, right? So I just action, I want to allow. If suppose sources 10.20, destination is 20.10, I want to deny web services, the services, I mean, I want to deny FB, and if services HTTPS, port number 443, action is deny. Okay, so these two rules I have written in my router. Okay, so now I can filter the traffic. So now my router, it will check the ACL when the traffic is hitting to my router incoming interface and it will check the ACL. And if source is 10.10, if destination is 20.10 and service is HTTPS, TCP protocol, service is HTTPS, then it will be allowed. So the user, system a they can able to reach successfully reach facebook okay and now for system b when he try to access and again we can we already have a rule so it will hit the interface of your router and it will check acl will check it will check the acl acl said source is 10.20 and destination is 20.10 and service is 443 please block it so it will deny Okay, so that's fine. So both are filtering the traffic properly. I mean, my router is pr properly filtering the traffic. Okay, so now <clears throat> my use case is system A is allowed, right? System A is allowed to access the Facebook. So now he is trying to upload some traffic or trying to download some video, let's say, which is contained more 150 MB data file. Okay, now he try to download, upload, or download some file okay which is having 150 mb let's assume he is trying to download it sorry upload it 150 mb and 150 mb it <clears throat> will convert as a each ip packet right so it will convert as a 100 ip packet right one ip packet max to max it, it can have 1.5 mb right so data it can convert right so like this like this, I have 100 IP packets. So now each IP packet will reach my router or stateless filtering fire, stateless filtering device, which can be a normal router or which can be a <coughs> your wireless router, whatever it is, which is fill packet filtering device. Okay. So now what will happen for each IP packet, since it's a packet based filter, 
right so it will execute the acl for each ip packet guys first disadvantage acl executions it's an app even it since it's a it's an advantage and disadvantage both okay so it will execute the packet each packet acl will be executed for the each ip packet even though the session is already authenticated the authorized user and allowed source and destination allowed services only but for the same traffic it start the user is started to upload the data and this is in the same traffic for same traffic each ip packet packet will be acl will be executed so 100 times ACL execution will be happen because it's a packet based filter. So it will try to execute the ACL each and every packet. It will do packet in <clears throat> header inspection. Okay. So it will check the each packet header. What is the source and destination? What is the application? What is the service? And if it is all allowed a source and destination allowed service, then it will allow the packet. So 100 execution ACL execution will be happen. So it's for one machine, right? So let's assume I have a hundred LAN machines for all hundred LAN machines. It will execute the ACL unnecessarily again and again. So it will create a workload. Second cons. Okay. And just ignore the workload since it's a packet filter, right? So all, if suppose all the hundred packets are received by the user and properly, then it's fine. If suppose, right? If suppose any of the packet is denied, or any of the packet is dropped. So again, TCP will like, will send the re <coughs> re-establishment, right? So for the same, for that particular packet. So again, it will do inspection for the re-packet <coughs> re initiation as well. And it will do inspection and will do ACL, ex execute the ACL. So again, it will be workload. Guys. It will be, again, it will be a workload. And second thing, so it's already allowed it's not maintaining the connection table. So because of that, each and every IP packet is, even though it's the same traffic, each and every IP packet, sorry, ACL is executed and it's authenticating. Okay. So this is one of the main drawback. And second thing, <clears throat> it's, it's create wasting the bandwidth multiple time ACL execution. It, it's happened. So it's wasting the hardware resources as well. And, Additional thing. So while doing an inspection, it will do inspection only IP header. What is the source? What is the destination? What is the protocol service? That only. But it will not do inspect whether that particular traffic is safest to traffic or not. Okay. So any the data is contain any vulnerability, spyware, malware, virus, whatever it is, it, it will do no inspection. It will not maintain the connection table and no deep inspection. So we'll come back to the deep inspection later. So since it doesn't have a connection table, it will not maintain the connection table. So it will do workload, over workload. So it will do multiple times. It will execute the ACLs and that will act, uh, <coughs> consume the hardware resources. So there is a chances to become, I um, mean, your hardware might be crashed guys. Okay. And it is not suitable for the complex network which is because it's not application specifically, it's, it will not do deep inspection and it will not uh, identify the application. Okay, so layer seven filter, it's not possible. You, If you want to filter the traffic based on the application, I want to allow only Facebook. I want to allow, I want to deny inside the Facebook. I want to deny some specific services, micro application. Facebook, it's a collaborated application with <clears throat> where, where we have a chat, we can do chat, we can share the files, we can play games, right? So these micro application also and all, I want to deny or allow, I want to control it. In that case, your packet filtering will not having that features. Okay. It's a another drawback guys okay so only when you have a fire packet filtering firewall you can do l3 based filter and l4 fil based filters you can allow or deny the traffic based on only l3 and l4 just forget about the inspection it's not possible by the l7 layer 7 wise application wise in traffic you cannot allow or deny okay and <clears throat> so to overcome this in traditional method, they bring up the another method called stateful firewall. Okay, the main drawback is 
it's doing a acl execution multiple times so that's uh, that's the reason it's it's headed to your router it because it's the router is not on it's not a firewalling specific device to filter the traffic it's also have a, a routing table update it's need to do and routing l3 functions routing nat vpn all the traffic is take care by your <coughs> router so it will do over workload okay so it's not possible to do deep inspection properly and and it will not handle the huge data flow uh, because it's already have multiple jobs okay so uh, it will definitely it will crash the device guys okay so to avoid that they want they identified so the huge impact is happening because of again and again already authenticated traffic we were again and again doing a acl execution execution so it's 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 over i mean it's <clears throat> taking a hardware resources much so to avoid that they come up with a, another method called a stateful authentication or stateful inspection so now the traditional firewall they bring one dedicated hardware called firewalls okay so not only routers the firewalls can do l3 functionalities it can act like a router as well and it can do firewalling functions properly okay so that is called firewalls. So the first firewall is fix firewall. The modern ASF firewall is coming from the fix. Okay, <clears throat> fix firewall. So it's example fix firewall is an example for one of the example for stateless firewall. Okay, that's not a stateful firewall. Fix firewall, it's not a stateful firewall, but after fix the asa they bring the the cisco they are implementing the stateful concepts okay and they are make it as a full fledged firewall guys okay so now we are going to take asa as a traditional connection stateful firewall because fix is not a stateful firewall okay so asa i'm going to replace here so now what happens so the same concept, same filter for system A, we want to allow Facebook and system B we want to deny Facebook, the same ACL we are going to execute. So this time what will happen when the pack, first packet is hitting for the any request, now ASA, what, will, what it will do, it will maintain the table. So it will give some, it will maintain some order. I mean, it will give a unique number, let's say connection name or session name, session number one. I just give an example like this, session one and user system a the the source is source ip destination ip and source protocol i mean uh, sorry port number okay and the status okay status of that session so now source ip is 10.10 .10, destination is 20.10 and port number is 443 and <clears throat> status is live status Okay, the session is still going on because 100 the user is already authenticated and by the existing ACL and he is allowed and now he is transmitting some traffic. Okay, until unless the user is going to terminate the session, the session will be maintained. So whatever the traffic he after upload the 100 IP packets. So I mean that particular video or uh, data. So he is going to initiate another video or he is going to download some files from the Facebook as well. So video or a game or whatever it is okay so now the session is now these <clears throat> this extra packet which is initiated newly that right so that also will not be authenticated the acl will not be executed again until unless this connection is closed okay the it will check when the packet is hitting to your asa it will check this is already authenticated or not if the connection status is there, it's active, then your firewall will skip the ACL for that particular traffic, guys. For particular user, I mean, the particular traffic, your firewall will drop the packet. Sorry, it will it will not execute the ACL until unless the state is closed or reinitiated. Okay, so session is end or reinitiated by the user. The ACL will not be re-execute for the same traffic for the same session not same traffic same session guys okay so that is avoided 
yes you can able to see session table in all the firewalls i'll show you in upcoming sessions guys okay so it's an introduction session i'll not prepare for the lab like lab so i mean i need to switch on your lab and i need to do some configurations and initiate the traffic then only i can able to show it so however session table will verify all the <clears throat> will i mean to filter the traffic and to verify that result we will check the session table only okay so i'll show it <clears throat> so now now we we fix the drawback of your packet filtering the main reason it's in a it's not maintaining the connection table because of that it is doing acl execution multiple time so it's wasting the bandwidth and it's giving a overload to the devices hardware resources it will occupy more hardware resources when it comes to the complex network okay so that so that's the that's the reason they want to fix their uh, connection table stateless issue so they bring up the new technology called stateful inspection and because of that the multiple acl execution is closed i mean we we avoid the multiple acl execution but again why the stateful firewall we again the asa why we are saying as a traditional firewall okay so asa firewall fix the connection table issue they give they support the connection uh, inspection um, i mean uh, session table right so it will maintain the connections so even though it is maintaining the connection table again it will filter the traffic based on the acl only okay and now what is the pros and cons let me show you the pros and cons so the pros again you can filter the traffic based on the layer 3 which means source ip and destination ip and source pro network or destination network based filter when it comes to the network layer when it comes to the transport layer protocol port number you can use as a filter okay and additionally connection table will be supported connection state it, it will maintain the session state information so it will avoid the unnecessary acl execution and then again what is the drawback again your asa firewall as it is uh, the packet filtering firewall it doesn't support layer 7 filter which means application based filters or micro application control all right so or uh, it which is not possible in your asa traditional asa and then it can it will not support the layer 7 filter for filtering data filtering or <clears throat> right and if it is a good firewall it has to do two things data filter and monitoring you can say it's a monitoring monitoring or deep inspection the traffic so your firewall will do l3 in your asa firewall traditional asa firewall will do l3 and l4 filters and it is having a connection table even though it is supporting the connection table it doesn't support the application level filter it doesn't have a privilege to see the application level data it will not able to see the what data inside it has what kind of data it is what kind of application is this right so whether it is a secure data or not right so this visibility is not possible for when you are using a traditional asa firewall or traditional firewalls okay even though the traditional firewalls are stateful firewall when you are using a traditional firewalls it doesn't support the layer 7 filter and it doesn't support the application visibility it will not do deep inspection against any vulnerability firewall malware it, it is not it is not going to inspect the data allowed data whether it can allow or deny the traffic but if it is the traffic is allowed so that allowed traffic will not be monitored by your asa firewall because that does that much capability is not there in a traditional firewalls okay <clears throat> clear guys so that's the reason we are saying asa as a, even though it's supporting the stateful inspection we are saying it is a traditional firewall okay then what is next generation firewall so whatever the drawback here we are defining in a in a traditional firewall right so layer no layer 7 filtering no monitoring right so everything will be applied here the all the features will be supported by the next generation firewall guys okay so go to next generation firewall example of next generation firewall whatever we are going to here we are going to learn palo alto 40 gate checkpoints square sorry cisco ftd right so except asa ftd palo alto 40 gate 
check point these four products or next generation firewall products okay so <clears throat> what is the advantage of having next generation firewall which will support the layer 3 filter so if it means i can use a when it comes to the network layer i want to filter if i want to filter the traffic based on the network layer source ip and destination ip as a filter i can use it source ne entire network and destination entire network i can use it as a filter okay and when i use the layer 4 i can use additional filter so protocol tcp or udp as a filter and services port number services as a filter web service mail service whatever it is right so <clears throat> and then along with that i have a application filter so i can do filter layer 7 by application wise i have application visibility and i can able to filter i can uh, if i want to allow let's say uh, the same topology if you go to the so let me draw again system a and system b this is in a cisco asa okay now <clears throat> one particular service right so i want to let's say this again it's a facebook okay <clears throat> so now I want to allow system A to access the Facebook and system B, I want to allow or deny the Facebook, right? And so, but in system B, I want to, system A, I want to allow entire Facebook applications, whatever. But system B, I want to allow Facebook, but inside the Facebook, when they try to access Facebook chat, I want to deny it. So that is not possible. And even by application wise, you can't allow or deny Facebook, but the so by using a source IP as a filter and destination IP as a filter and service as a filter only, you can allow Facebook or deny Facebook. But application wise, the so I don't I mean the Facebook, we have a multiple Facebook uh, server. So we based on the continent, right? So Facebook India server, I have Facebook US server. We have in US, we have a separate server for Facebook, Facebook UK server we have, right? So they are having a different destination IP addresses, right? So if I specifically deny Facebook for Facebook India only 20.10, but system B can access Facebook US, which is having 30.10, let's assume that 30.10. So be, because the I used in my ACL, I used the source IP as a filter, destination IP as a filter. Okay. So this is not a matching destination IP. So this IP is not filled, blocked by the ACL. So system B can access the Facebook server, US server. Okay. So in this use case, I'm not able to filter the traffic properly. Okay, so in this use case, we have to use the application filter. So the destination might be anywhere else. I want to block Facebook for the system B. So in this use case, I can go with the layer seven filter only guys, application filter, okay, which is called application filter. And that you can able to do it only on layer seven features supported firewalls, which is next generation firewalls. Okay, clear. So <clears throat> in this use case, it needs need to support the layer seven filter as well. So in next generation firewall will support the layer seven filter as well, guys. Okay. So layer three filter, layer four filter, layer seven filters. It's only for firewalling. Okay. If it is a good firewall, it's need to filter. It's only for filtering or you can say it's a filtering, filtering or firewalling. It will allow or deny the traffic, right? So filtering. So layer seven filter, you can achieve it, but when you want to do deep inspection, allow the traffic, I, I just allow the system A to access the Facebook, right? And while accessing the Facebook, I want to know uh, the user is trying to download some file in a, a Facebook, right? So that file, I need to make sure it's a safe file or not. It might be contain virus, malware, spyware, whatever it is. So I want to make sure it's, it's a secure data. So I need to monitor even though it's already authenticated by your firewall 
the user and source user and destination is trustable persons but the data we are not sure the data might be infected by virus or malware or in between the internet the attacker might be modify the data the data might be have some vulnerabilities so we need to even though it is an allowed allowed traffic authenticated by the firewall while during the conversation or communication right so the data might be modified by the unknown person in the internet so it's not enough just authenticating the traffic where the users and source and destination, it's authorized source and destination or not, it's not enough. It also need to do deep inspection for the vector security purpose. Okay, so that deep inspection will be supported by the next generation firewall, not traditional firewall guys. So what they will do, they will do, even though the traffic is authenticated, they will do, I'll monitor the traffic, whether that it's an safest traffic, any vulnerability, any viruses contain or not. So to identify it's having any virus or malware. So your IB have a IPS intrusion prevention system, which can do monitor against the virus, malware and the spyware, right? So any type of network type of attack, phishing attack, <clears throat> whatever it is. So any intrusions, any um <clears throat> type of attacks it can do deep inspection ips will do monitoring guys so deep inspection okay and along with that next generation firewalls additionally they have some additional features just like how we can filter the traffic based on the application you can filter the traffic based on the url web 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 traffic you can filter the traffic based on the websites based on some specific website you can block or same site i mean let's say i want to block entire um sports based web websites or entire um <clears throat> well entire well uh, i mean any illegal websites just like uh, 18 plus contents websites or uh, any um, child abused or any illegal activities like gambling right so gaming websites all that I can able to filter based on the URL filter, which is supported by the next generation firewall. So I, due to time concern, I just saying, simply I'm saying that what I can do in a URL filter, what I can do in a IPS. So in a D, in a upcoming session for the each and every to topic, these topic, we have a separate session for all these topics. So I'll explain clearly in deeply guys. Okay. So URL filter, simply we can filter the traffic based on the website. I want, I don't want to allow some specific websites or same set of website. I don't want to allow. In that case, I can use URL filter, which is pre in inbuilt features in next generation firewall and IPS for the monitoring purpose, a deep inspection against the virus, malware, spyware, intrusions, whatever it is, attacks, network type of attacks, data steal. Okay. We have a few protection called the data or data protection, which is to avoid the data stealing any outside users or internal users. If they try to steal your own information data that we can protect by the next generation firewall and any specific file you want to block or allow, right? I just want to block executable files. I just want to block PDF files for some specific service in, or entire uh, in my production network or specific source and destination only for the specific services that you can block or that kind of files or that kind of, I when I when user is using a Microsoft <clears throat> Office, right? So I, if they try to open the PDF file through Microsoft Office, I just want to block it. So there I can use application specific. I can select specific application and file type as well. Okay. So that and all we, I, we can achieve based on the file blocking services, which is supported by the next generation firewall guys. Clear. Okay. So this is the uh, features or these are all the features are supported by the next generation firewall and traditional firewall will not support the UTM features, which is URL filter or zero day threat prevention, zero day malware production or zero day threat prevention is called any type of virus malware spreading over the internet newly recently, right? So that can be, oh, uh, uh, that can be in if suppose that kind of vulnerability malware virus spyware, it is try to attack your production network. The, the attacker is use that kind of vulnerability, uh, uh, virus malware, anything, right? So your next generation firewall can identify, have a capability to, to identify and protect that 
new type of attacks protect your environment from new type of attacks okay so these features the all these features will be supported only on next generation firewall not stateful traditional firewall or stateless traditional firewall guys okay clear any queries guys so so we are running out of time so that's it today the comparison of next generation firewall and traditional firewall some more comparison we'll do it on tomorrow okay so these are all the comparison so scalability performance additional feature support so that i'll explain tomorrow guys